Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special episode of Claudia Talks. Today, I'll be talking about the Persona 5 gameplay trailer we recently got. Um, now, originally, I wasn't going to do a video today, since I'm going to be gone all day long. But the uh, thing is, uh, we have a new kitten. We got her today. She's a little black and white ball of fluff. And I tend to try and stay awake as long as possible, taking care of them when we first get them, to make sure that they're uh, acclimated to their new home. So, that is why I am still up at 4 o'clock in the morning when I have to be up at 6.30. But it's a thing, so I thought, you know what, I'll make the best of this time. Uh, but if you do hear her mewing in the background occasionally, don't worry, she's alright. She's just, uh, she's sitting beside me right now and she's playing and she's actually about to fall off the couch. <laughs> Stop that. Stop that little one. Anyway, yeah. Um, without further ado, let's get started. I will be, uh, I will be just commenting, giving my random thoughts. I don't know how long this video is gonna last. Probably not for very long. Uh, obviously, at least six minutes and forty-seven seconds. <laughs> but yeah, I will be pausing at random. So, let's go. Uh, oh yeah, and this starts off with a staff interview and the additional combat scene. So, let's turn you down a little bit. Video, what are you doing? Thank you. So pretty. <laughs> I got you. Go away. See now in the other video we got hang on. In the, the rest of the video we got, sorry, it actually shows him when he does that, uh, killing the target. So I'm thinking that if you're high enough level above them, you'll just eliminate them. I think there was something like that in it was Flash and I can't remember what game it was in. Oh well, onward. See, oh yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, let me rewind. I actually have another chance to talk about this later, but doggone it, I'm just again. The menu here. This menu's freaking awesome. Like, uh, all this does is, is hot map it to certain keys or certain buttons, sorry. So that uh, in combat, if you know what you're going to do, you just have to hit it. You have to scroll down to it. I mean, I know a lot of us put it on memory and then just... Repeated as we go, and obviously they had rush mode before. Actually, and that's something I'll talk about right now. I don't see an option for rush mode right now. Might be down here, but unfortunately, I do not speak Japanese. I wish I did, but I don't know. Anyway, continuing onward. I wish I understood you, dude. I really do. Here's another interesting scene. You see her later. I wonder if this is before she joined the party and she's hiring you to do something, or if this is a result of a heist, or if this has something to do with the vault we just saw with uh, with greed. Just curiosity. Just curiosity. Mouse, go away. Oh yeah, no. Here, here's something else too. I want to point this out. Whenever you go to your Persona menu, your Persona pops up behind you while you choose what you're going to do. It's freaking awesome. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sorry. Uh, that's awesome. Although, here's one issue I have. I don't know what she just did, but it didn't have much. Uh, I think it's fire. The pausing it like I did there, it looks like it's fire. It looks like she did Ugi. And obviously, it'd have to be Ugi because she just blasted Jack Frost to hell. And that's obviously Jack Frost's weakness. But it doesn't have much visual effect or flair. So I'm hoping that as you go up the ladder, Agi, Agi Lao, uh, Agi Dine, that they have more visual flair to them. But that's a minor thing. Honest to God, it could stay like that. And so long as it's a good game, I'm not going to complain. This, by the way, I, I think this is... You know how you get one more when you hit someone? I think... You now have the option to switch to a different party member to let them do the thing. Also, Yusuke's weapon, Katana. Hopefully done in the EI stance. Fucking awesome. Pardon my English. A little excited. And tag out. It's so freaking cool. Captain Kid. And here we see Yusuke's regular attack. Probably not his full chain. Excuse me. And obviously not his combo. I mean, critical, sorry, not combo. But, I mean, you see several different attacks for the characters as we go. I'll continue. And then we get hers. And this is also the first time we see the Renorgio attacks. I love the way they're just kind of chilling there, and then he does the whole come on thing. That's a really cool way to end combat. I 
And as you can see here, you don't actively do these things. You don't have to worry about jumping and missing. It's just button prompts. Not a complaint. I'm not complaining. I didn't exactly want parkour in my persona. <laughs> And here, I'm wondering if you have to be quote-unquote stealthed in order to perform these uh, preemptive attacks. Which are really freaking cool, by the way. Also, very happy the demon's back here. Anyways, nothing against uh, shadows, mind you, but the demons have... I don't know, they have more presence to me. They have more personality. For some reason, uh, and this isn't a massive complaint, but I always thought the regular demons in Persona 3 and 4 were kind of bland. Anyway, onward. Twentieth anniversary of Persona. I've been playing since the start. I would have played SMT too, but Chipmunk on my Tensei did not come to the States until mock turn. Which I then ate up. <laughs> Along with Raido Kuzanoa. Oh, yeah, hang on, hang on. This part was important. I'll talk about this real fast. Here. Whenever he picks shot, it pops up two different things shot and special. And I'm wondering what special is. Is it special ammunition or special attacks relative to the characters? I'm leaning toward the second one because later on we'll see uh, the beautiful thief, as she calls herself. There's Morgana called her. Uh, doing a special attack. And I'll get to that when we get to it. But that's just, it's something to think about. Here, these two abilities shot, special. Moving on. And here, I got it again, is one of the new party members. Where'd you go? Being all badass. We'll get a better view of her later, and I'll talk about her when she's actually introduced in the video. There she is. She's your bare fisted user, which she didn't have in four question mark. Count used a chair, and that doesn't count. Oh, Teddy used claws, but Teddy was the funny party member, so I don't really count that. Also, there's a lot of progression going on in these videos, if you guys don't notice. Like, in the in the early ones of Lust, you've got about 160, 170 hit points somewhere around there. Here, you've got 364. So, this is obviously late game. Uh, is this the moon base? It looks like it's going to be the high-tech moon base. Anyway, yeah, no, we'll get back to that character when she's introduced properly. Oh, by the way, there are translated versions of this on YouTube if you want to look them up. I'm not doing it here because what they say isn't super relevant to what's going on. Uh, it adds a little bit, but not enough to really be, you know, game-breaking. <laughs> And one thing, one thing, I, I also, this is the perfect place to pause for that. One thing I want to note about this is this game is still absolutely gorgeous. It is beautiful, it is stylish, it is spot on. And uh, it does so without, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What am I trying to say here? It, it's beautiful without being super intensive insofar as graphics go. And I, I think that's good proof, in my opinion, that you don't have to be high tech into the line graphics in order to be a beautiful game. My opinion, though, onward. Yeah, I know. I'll point this out, too. Everyone else has so far, so I'm going to go for the bait, too. I'll get back. Um, why is this made central? You've got two here. you got two there. Actually, they all four probably work for the cafe they're at over there. Interesting. This is going to be one of the places you spend a lot of your time, I think. Oh, yeah, look at the icons over here, by the way. You've got a catcher game. You've got a wrench icon. You've got a robot. Why is there a robot? You've got their cafe, which is right there in front of you. And you've got... I can't make that out. Along with the thingies over here. Continuing onward. 
Yeah, here he is. Legman! Sorry, I'm done. <laughs> I had to terrorize you guys with that shot. This, by the way, if you don't remember from before, is Lust. And it shows. He's terrifying. Look! Humpty Dumpty! Ah, oh, It's all that lard you ate, buddy. You see more kind of like peeking around. <laughs> Stealth attack again. Ah, right. New party member. Uh, potentially the student council president. And mentions that here. Anna Morgana mentions that here. That actually would have been important to have the translations on for that. Uh, pfft, what would she theorize? She theorizes this chariot. But if you notice here, this is pointed out before, the BJ. That is usually uh, for the priestess arcana. So it's an interesting thought. Anyway, this is your bare-fisted fighter. And her persona is a motorcycle. Look, so long as they keep that there, this is important that it's okay. So long as they don't go to certain other RPG I want to talk about now, it's a ridiculous extent for transforming things, uh, then I'm okay. Like, seriously, keep the persona as a bike, and I'll probably all right with it. Upgrade it when you do your usual upgrading your persona, and, and we'll be cool. But so long as it doesn't transform into something else, and so long as it's not two personas melded into one and if you play the game you guys know what i'm talking about if you don't then you don't know what i'm talking about and that's perfectly okay onward i also like by the way that she uses an actual martial arts style i loved don't get me wrong i loved akihiko's boxing style i thought it was a really cool uh change up because usually you get martial artists like this but she is still super badass and i appreciate that so much <laughs> Now then, just for you guys, in a, this is supposedly use case teacher, and uh, if I remember the article correctly, he's been stealing use case paintings and his uh, his credit for said paintings. That's a thing. Onward. Hope his name's actually use case. Giant nerd sphinx. Onward. <laughs> And here's your support. Uh, foo something. So I'll just call her Foo for now. And her persona is the Necronomicon, which is a satellite. But it has all the hieroglyphics and stuff on the edges. So it works. But this is something this is something important. Uh, she's going to support you actively in the battle like Risei did in Golden. This is big. This is a, a big thing for me because before they were very passive, especially Risei and Teddy early on in Persona 4. They didn't do much. Uh, they memorized what the enemy was weak against. Woohoo. I mean, they did get a little bit better as they got levels up, but early on they were just absolutely useless. And usually by the time you got to the point where you had Risei's ability to fully scan enemies, it didn't matter anymore. Onward. I can just click on the screen to pause. What am I doing? And here we have the elements. As you can see here. These two are the unknowns. Obviously, those are holy and death. That one, I'm guessing, is a nerve, which will probably make up your status elements. And this is nuclear, which they're bringing back from the other ones. And I'm wondering if nuclear is going to encompass your non-elemental attacks this time. And not have them be non-elemental, but have them be a specific, uh, highly unresisted element. Now, I don't know if you guys know much about Persona 4, but there were actually enemies who could resist Almighty. It was Almighty damage there. There were enemies who could resist Almighty damage, but that was usually in conjunction with them being stronger against uh, all-out attacks. So it was kind of weird. Continuing onward. Love that map, by the way. Yeah, here are some of the jobs. This is a late night job doing dishes. Like, uh, you could do it in golden. You could do dishes in golden. I think this is taken straight from there. Also, look at this bartender. <laughs> onward. And here, I'll rewind it just a step because it's so brief. It's so brief a window. Uh, this has been pointed out, and I'm going to copy it. i got to copy it because I'm curious, is this you? I mean, you from Persona 4. Because that looks like him, and this would be eight years later. 
So he would be what? In his 20s, 23, 24? I hope it is. Like, I hope that's just a cool little cameo they tossed in. It may not be, but it, it would be interesting to see where it goes. Also, uh, this is uh, conjectured to be the daytime job you can do. Excuse me, got the sniffles. Love this music. And here we have Creed, who is an obvious mafioso. <laughs> but he also looks like Beelzebub. And it would be really cool if Beelzebub made a return. So I wouldn't complain about that in the least. And here's her bike. This is probably going to be where she gets her persona. I wonder what that was. And here we have the beautiful thief, as Morgana introduces her as. Ah, too far. There we go. This is a beautiful thief. And then she says the same thing again. She obviously uses a halbeard and a grenade launcher combo. <laughs> okay, look. Okay, that might be an axe. Oh, uh, that could be a mass tax. That's an axe. That's an interesting combination for her look. And for the fact that she's pulling the obvious French card here. But, by the way, I was talking about this earlier. Remember when I popped when he popped up the menu that had shoot and then it had shoot and special? I think these are going to be some of the specials. But I don't know. That is just my, my guess. I'm going to say my guess and not my theory. Just my guess. <laughs> I'm going to talk about this for a second. I paused here for a reason. <laughs> because I'm not going to look at the end of Rage Chick. Uh, but this is obviously another beach scene. Uh, they've talked about before, not anyone official, but how the plane seems to be going to Hawaii for vacation, which is interesting. They're going to the States. I'm not complaining about that. But the beach scenes so far have been hit and miss. Persona 3, they fit in. You needed that beach scene in Persona 3 to break up that super serious atmosphere and to give some lighthearted moments to Akihiko, who is usually just very serious. And come on, deep, deep, deep breaths plays during it. <laughs> and it's just a, it's, it's a good little scene. It's just absolutely hilarious. It also works very well to Usher and I guess. Persona 4 Golden? Uh, it was shoehorned in. I, that's how I feel about it. Uh, but I have issues with Golden in general. I didn't like most of the additional stuff. I thought they tried to absolutely force Marie on the party. Look, she's an important person. Look, she's big. Look, she's that's Marie. And honestly, I think if they were going with that route, they should have taken a couple more months and made Marie into an actual party member. And that would have added more depth to her, for one, thank God, which she would have needed, but they didn't do. And would have added more uh, value to Golden in itself. Because the additional scenes there didn't do a whole lot. I, I'm not complaining specifically and terribly about the beach scene because that scene actually was pretty funny. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go look it up. Go look up uh, Kanji Venus. <laughs> I'm ready to be born, damn it. And it, it, it is a funny scene, but it just doesn't add a whole lot to the game proper. Uh, this scene, though, I think, not this scene, but this particular uh, chapter in the game is going to have a lot more to do than this, and I'll get to that here in a sec. See, there's this festival going on, and for some reason, no one in the party looks happy. Uh, and I, I think something big is going to happen while they're in Hawaii. I'm pretty sure this is while they're in Hawaii. I'm not positive. This could be while they're back home, and it could be one of the regular Japanese festivals that goes on. But since we just came from the beach scene, it is my guess that they are still on vacation. <laughs> Sorry. I shouldn't laugh so hard about this. And his shirt. What does his shirt say? Can I get a better view of that? I see Nomo. No mo rules, of course. That's perfectly fitting for the party. Also, no, I do not think this is Morgana. I do not think this is her human form. I think this is just one of their classmates, possibly a social link or cooperation. Can't say for sure, though. Explosions. This, by the way, shows each of the party members' uh, uh, pfft, code names. Can't think of it for a second. Uh, 
I do not know Moon Rune, so I apologize once again, but I do know that the main character is Joker, and then there's some conjecture over who is Queen. I've heard Anna, I've heard uh, Martial Artist Girl, don't know for sure. And this is her doing a chain attack. And the question is, is this a regular critical attack from her? Or is this a special ability? Because uh, I'm thinking it's a special ability, but I'm not positive. It's also possible that critical attacks in this game will incorporate both weapons, both the ranged and the melee weapon. Because that was what happened with French Girl too. Sorry, uh, beautiful thief. I don't know if she's actually French or just obsessed with French. Also, Alice. And I find this funny too, but what freaking Anne over here? She's just bored. She's just stretching while Alice screams the enemy to die for her. She doesn't scream it. She just says it nicely. And then stuff like that happens. Also, joint attack. And I'm wondering if this is like a, a, for the team up attacks before. Uh, in four, sorry, I, I blanked out for a second. In four, where they would join in when you did an attack that dealt a critical or hit a weakness. Just curiosity, or if this is some smaller variation of all-out attack, I do not know. Also, these are obviously our, our Elizabeth and uh, Doc Gone. I'm forgetting everything. Probably because I'm doing this at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, our attendance this time around, and they don't seem to be too happy about you. I know, I keep having to rewind. I'm sorry, guys. Come back here. Ah, I had it. I'm trying to pause on the guillotine, if you guys can tell. This. There's uh, a number of conjectures about this so far. My guess is it's for fusion, but uh, I'm not sure. But I say for fusion because it's set up in the two pattern, but there's also twins there. So it's hard to say. It could also be set up to possibly execute you and your persona, but I don't know. Also, well, you know, I'll get to that later. Those are two separate scenes, by the way. You see her running up with them, and then for some reason it looks like she's captured here. And she's not in that scene. And look, our big bad guy. Now, that was something that I didn't do in Personas 3 and 4. You don't know who your big villain was in those two. Uh, it remained a mystery. In 4, you knew it was this mysterious serial killer, and you had no idea who it was, and you're trying to find it. In 3, you just had no clue. You're like, we got to kill these big shadows, and that was about the extent of it. I mean, they did show up. You had some villains show up later who were pretty close to it before the final boss. But, uh, yeah, I'm wondering if you'll know who the final boss is. Not final boss, but main antagonist is before the end of the game in this one. Or if this is at the end of the game. And he's like, hey, I'm here. So, and I like this scene here. I like this scene of them all coming out of a dormitory or the restaurant or what have you. And all being, they're all getting ready. Because it's obvious that something big went down here. Because, you know, you can see this particular version of the world now. <clears throat> There's the release date, 9.15. Welcome to the Velvet Room. Now, some people commented that uh, he says, welcome to my villa room there. But the thing is, I'll put it on loop. I'll have it playing in the background while I talk for a little bit. Uh, but it's always been his villa room. And uh, Margaret. Either Margaret in Persona 4, Elizabeth, by the way, I remember Margaret's name now, obviously. <laughs> mentions that it's always been his villa room. That he... He fashions the Velvet Room based on the needs of the people visiting it and how many people are visiting it. So I don't think that's Now then, uh, what else do I have to say about this? That for one, this is looking absolutely fantastic so far. I'm super excited about this. The release date's a little weird. It's two weeks before uh, Final Fantasy 15, which is obviously going to be its main competition. Uh, I think that's a good thing, though. I think uh, Square Enix needs the competition. I think that when Square and Enix merged, they destroyed their competition because they were it. Because, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, 
But Dragon Warrior, Dragon Quest, and Final Fantasy were the two biggest names in RPGs forever. And they competed with each other, basically. I mean, they had two basically separate fan bases. I keep saying basically. I'm sorry, guys. Also, she has a cure ability. <clears throat> now I'm pointing out random things. And I think that this will be good for both companies and both franchises to have some sort of competition going on with each other because I feel like it will encourage both companies to do much better with their games. That's my hope, anyway. But back to this game itself. I have no major complaints. I'm concerned about Morgana because, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't a fan of Teddy. Like, I liked Teddy's personality, but I didn't like that he was a cutesy mascot character. And I didn't like some of his later blooming personality traits. And I'm hoping that Morgana just looks like the cute mascot character, but insofar as personality goes, that she's not just comedic relief or attempted comedic relief. Oh, wow. What else is it to say about this? Aside from, I hope it comes out soon. <laughs> I mean, stay sad soon, because it'll be really hard not to spoil things for myself. Also, this is an early dungeon. Yeah, this is first or second dungeon. And you can tell, because if you look at his at Ryuji's later weapons, uh, they're a lot more impressive than just a steel pipe. Oh, also, uh, the special edition of this comes with all four previous personas and their soundtracks and a couple of other really nifty things. And I'm really hoping we get those states out as well. And and in other regions, obviously. Because uh, that'd be really cool. I'm really looking forward to that. I've really got nothing else on this. I'm just really excited about it. I want to come out as soon as possible. I think I had some other commentary, but I've since forgotten it. <laughs> like There were things I was going to discuss, and now my brain's just like, nah, bro, you done. But yeah, no, thank you guys very much for joining me for this video. I will flip back over to the actual broadcast so that I can take it back properly. Also, stretching to infinity. <laughs> thank you guys very much for joining me for, joining me for this video. I can talk. I'm going to take the kitten and try to get a couple more hours sleep before I have to be up. But I will be seeing you.